Hello, welcome pen friends. I had a special request from a viewer that I go ahead and uh, talk about the Opus 88 in the mini. And I do have the mini pocket pen in the check. It says check. It does say fine, but mine is a broad nib. That's what I ordered and they put a broad nib on it. So we're gonna look at the pen real good. We're gonna write with it and then we're gonna compare it to some of my other fountain pens. Um, both Opus 88 fountain pens and regular ones. And then I'll tell you what I like and what I don't like about this pen. Um, this just recently came out and I was lucky because I didn't have that much in my pen allowance. This was $79 and I got it from Van Ness. But I had money in my account to buy some linen stuff and, and Manuel just said, go ahead and get it because you want it and go ahead and get it now and we'll replace the, the linen money. So that's how it ended up. <laughs> but here's the sleeve. It just comes with a little slip sleeve and then uh, a nice little cardboard box with a magnetic... Uh, closure and then you just you get your little paperwork here uh, I haven't really looked at these because I have so many uh, now of these same pans that I don't need to worry about the instructions and it does come with your eyedropper what I like the box for is just to take all this out and have a have a little uh, pencil box just like when we were in school this this stuff will come out too but haven't done that yet so <laughs> okay so here's the pen and these opus 88 pens are all eyedropper pens so that just means all you have to do is fill the barrel with ink and you're you're ready to go um they had four four different colorways and they also had a Christmas edition one too but this one is the one that caught my eye with the checkered uh, cap I just love it the other one that that had like a blue and green and that kind of look that was a multicolor, that one caught my eye as well but I thought about my gray inks and uh, just the fact that this black and white is pretty neutral for any color at all that I want and since I don't expect you know to to get another one of these I wanted to get something that would go with any uh, ink wow I guess my hands are sweaty because I'm fogging up the pen I do have this inked with Graf Von Faber Castile Stone Gray. This is um, kind of a medium, nice uh, ink that has some water resistance, and it's an everyday uh, ink for me. Uh, let's see. I got mine at Drom Ghouls on sale, so I ended up with a 34 cents a mil, and this was the uh, water chromatography test shows that it's pretty pretty hardy and, and water resistant but just so you know what we're working with but let's take a real good look at this one um, it's got a nice clip has some spring on it and then right up around the cap band it says opus 88 wow it's it's warm in this house must be I'm, I'm leaving all kinds of <laughs> fog and fingerprints on the pen and then it's got this beautiful check design it makes me think of uh, NASCAR uh, of the races I you know it just makes me think of that and then there's the finial <clears throat> okay and then your little I think when I put this in I made sure I had at least two mil and it it all went in there and it looks like I could have put more but again when you fill those syringes sometimes you get you don't get it exact and and I'm not going to be quoted on that but it's right around two mil that you can put in it it's got a little silver kind of a decoration decorative band or something and there's okay and these when you get to writing with them what I do is just open the uh, shut off valve so that I'll get a nice continuous flow when I put it in my pen case I, sh I close it off and you you still get quite a bit of writing once you close it off but if you leave it closed you eventually will run out of ink because this shuts it off and makes it nice um, so it won't leak okay so we get in here and uh, these nibs um, I'm gonna show you another nib unit since the person really wanted to see it, I want to be as thorough as I can because I'm not sure exactly what they wanted to know, but uh, this is a medium nib unit that goes on on this same pen. 
So it's just a screw in and that makes it super nice. It's one of the reasons I like the Opus 88 so much because I'm not having to just pull the nib and uh, worry about the feed. Although these feeds, they seem a lot more, excuse me. <laughs> so uh, I didn't coordinate with Manuel and he was watching a show. Um, these are not as delicate as like the Twisbees. They look and, and feel a lot more hardy, but I still like the idea that I don't have to fiddle with it too much to, to change it. <clears throat> so that's just a, a little detail there. Um, I'll open up a, a different one to show you kind of how it looks inside because I don't want to mess with it now that it's already inked. In fact, we'll get it ready because we're going to be writing in a minute. But um, this has a nice, comfortable section. I really like it. And see, I measured that out at uh, 11. I think I, on the website at Van Ness it said 11.7, but I was being real cautious with my, with my tool because I didn't want to scratch the section, but it's super comfortable. And all of the Opus 88s I've written with have been for me, but I like a, a nice uh, size grip. So, okay, let's see. Okay, so this is the Omar taken apart. We're going to look at it in comparison in a minute. But what you're going to see is the same thing that you see on the little checkered one. It's uh, It's got the shutoff valve there. And uh, you just put your ink right in. You can pour it right in. I use a, an ink syringe when I do it, though. So um, then you're all set. What I normally do is just dip the, the nib after I've filled up the pen. Then I dip the nib in the... Uh, ink too so that I get a good quick start there okay so I think what we're going to do is write with it and then we'll start with the comparisons of the other pens I've got my little Tomori River notebook here and I'll bring you a little bit closer I had this filled right away with a different gray ink but then I realized not only did I not clean the pen first which you should always do but I was using an ink that I wasn't that familiar with. So I um, went back and I cleaned the pen. <laughs> I just uh, transferred the ink back into the sample vial, cleaned the pen so that I could actually use one I'm used to and know that I had a clean pen. So here we go. It's a nice juicy writer. So it's Opus 88. And on the side of the box, it says mini pocket pen, I think. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, mini pocket pen. Check. That's the colorway, I guess. Okay, let's do a little. We know we have a broad nib on here. It's a nice, juicy writer. I'm not sure if I can. Yeah. Just kind of show you some of that shine. It's going to take a little bit to dry, but that's all right. And this is Graf Von Faber Castile. Whoop! Stone gray. Like I said, my absolute favorite <clears throat> gray ink in the whole world. <laughs> Yeah, very good. Um, it's just a nice juicy writer. That's how I love them. I do tend to use uh, a medium eco pen. And if you're not familiar with those, I've got one of them here. So I do use the medium nib eco pen inked up with this uh, Graf Von Faber-Castile all the time for my bullet journal. But what I realize is now with the uh, new Loistrom bullet journal that I'm going to use, I think I can get away with a broad nib, and if I can't, I can still uh, move back into the medium nib unit that, that goes on this one. Um, I'll be swapping back and forth because these two 
and another one of my uh, the new the other new Opus 88. So this is the Colaro. This takes the same exact uh, nib unit, the number five nib unit. So um, now I have that uh, halo, which is just just about like this one. And it's uh, out of my reach. Let me get that one. Really, all of that just to say that these three Opus 88s take the same nib unit, so it just adds such versatility for me uh, to be able to move the nibs around if I want to, and uh, I don't have to have three broad nibs. I can just, you know, make choices, and right now I've got the broad nib on this one. Uh, Guess I have the other broad nib on here. This one I think I've done something to, so I'm going to have to look at that one, that nib. And then I've got a medium nib on the halo. So there's, and I've got in spare a um, a stub nib. So I do really like that. So let's go ahead. That's a good segue to comparing to some other pens. Okay, we got several here so let me just bring them on over first i think what we should do is concentrate on pocket pens even though the only pocket pen i really have that compares well and size wise and comes even close price point wise and and you know material wise is the twisby mini so here's the twisby mini and here's the opus 88 mini pocket pen and they really are quite similar except you're dealing here with a eyedropper and here with a piston filler this one doesn't hold quite as much ink but it's pretty close um it looks like it's far far apart but i think this is under two mil and this is over so it's in the ballpark okay here's another um pocket pen but and this is an eyedropper this is the moon man mini wankai and that so that kind of it's in the realm but it certainly is smaller when you have it uh, not posted and I'm not sure how many other pocket pens we ought to bring over here because it's it's pretty obvious that that this Opus 88 is in the larger end of pocket pens yeah I really don't have any that well um, this one but it's this is in the like three dollar range the petite one which is an awesome little pen that can be eyedropper so I guess that qualifies and okay this is the uh, Monteverde MP3 uh, which takes a cartridge and can be eyedroppered so I haven't done that yet though but it's it's all plastic really and it, it's not it's not comparable in a way but there we have it for size comparison and all of that okay let's take a couple of these pocket pens away that I don't think really apply as much and we'll make sure we get all of the Opus 88 models that I have to compare them. So this is the Colaro in Opus 88. Oops, now well, we aren't gonna... Whoop, whoop, put... We'll put them so they don't have to roll. So here's the Colaro <clears throat> and here's the Halo which is basically the same pen body but it's it's different in the way the material is and it's got that color the colorway is just on the section which is so elegant oh my gosh and this will probably be the next one that I do an early impression on okay and this is the Omar the the big the big guy the nice um, girthy pen and uh, this is a demonstrator uh, a special edition from uh, stylo and style okay so I guess that's the tallest one but and I did want to just do, uh, kind of have us look at the sections real quick. See if we could compare them. <clears throat> they aren't all the same. <clears throat> These two seem to be the same, the, the Halo and the Colaro. And then this is girthier on the Omar. And on the demonstrator. So there is a difference. <clears throat> and I believe we're up here. We're, we're more comparison to the larger ones. But I'm going to have to do some measurements before I actually put them in the description box for you. And some of these are inked. So um, 
but they're all eyedropper pens. They all have that large capacity, so I love to find a permanent matchings for them so that I can ink them up and write for a long time with them and I haven't had one dry up. It's been awesome. But then again, I write every morning. So I'm either writing pen pal letters or notes from books or both. Um, let's see. This one's inked. I want to keep track of my inked ones. <clears throat> okay. I don't even know now whether I brought the Lamy pen over. No, I didn't. Okay. Just so that anybody who isn't familiar with the other Opus pens might need a little bit of comparison that is not Opus 88. So here's the Twisby Eco, the Lamy Vista, beside the <clears throat> little Opus 88 Mini. And again, the, uh, the Twisby Mini. So that's kind of where it fits in, not only to the Opus pens, but you know, in, in some of the ones that you may be familiar with. I don't think I have much else out on the desk. This is what I had. So, I think next is where I need to talk about what I like and what I don't like about this pen. So, let me put these others away. It might not surprise you, but I love this pen. I just love it. Um, I'm not sure that the size really makes much difference to me. I just, uh, the only part about it where it does is that I do like the girthy section. I feel like it's, it's not super girthy at 11, almost 12 millimeters. It's just really comfortable. And, um, I don't think I'd be carrying this around actually in my pocket, even though it's a pocket pen, but I just, I love it. It's, I already love the whole concept of a really trouble-free eyedropper pen and that's what that's what I have found these to be for me um, but then again I've come from other pens that that I didn't have such great luck with for eyedropper so that may be one of the reasons so I love the capacity I right off the bat I, I know that there's there's a lot of ink in there and it, it's gonna last me a while I just I've already mentioned this but I just love the ease of being able to change the nib units and makes your pen really versatile. Um, the other thing I love about these is they're just so beautiful. They're, they really have what I believe is quality construction and, and beauty and nothing, nothing seems cheap about this. And if anything, even though, yes, to me, in my budget, they're expensive, they seem more high quality even than their price. That's just an opinion, but that's probably why you watch my, my videos for my opinion. And then, oh, I guess I already mentioned not only the beauty, but the grip. I really like the, the comfortable grip on this. It's very, very nice. <clears throat> really nice. I, I do need to, to uh, go back over my notes about the Omar, because I'll be surprised. Oh, I need to see how that measures out. They are a little bit different, but I wouldn't be surprised if we end up in about that same uh, measurement. This one has a little slight indentation where you, to me, now I've heard people say these are too girthy for them, so it's very personal. Um, you'll, you're going to want to try it if you have doubts about it. <clears throat> like go to a pen show or try, try somebody else's to see. <clears throat> Okay, so on the other side of the coin, as far as what I don't like, the thing that bothers me the most about this pen is they get snapped up so fast that it's tough on a budget because you <laughs> you have to kind of move funds around if you want, I guess, if you want to get one. And maybe that'll calm down. It certainly got easier for me to uh, with the Omars. And, and I, over time, I got the colors that I wanted. <clears throat> but when you're on a budget and then, you know, these things are restocked and you want to get them, yeah. So that's my pet peeve, but that's true with lots of things where, you know, if if they're well-liked, they sell out. Okay, and then the only other thing, um, which is the second thing I don't like about the pen, but I really can't complain, is it is pricey. It's up there above my normal comfort level, $79, you know, but... Even that being said, it's high quality. To me, it's worth the money. Uh, for me, they've worked out that well, and I have them in service just almost continuously. I've rotated some, you know, for December because I'm trying really hard to completely write 
pens dry. Otherwise, this yellow one, this one stayed inked for like the first several months that I owned it. I just, you know, I'd have it inked right now, but I have another green ink going and I don't want to overdo it. So, wow. Um, I, I have nothing but good to say about it. And then the thing is, uh, with this type of pen, if you do have trouble with the nib then you can change the nib unit or, or if you don't like the one that you ordered if you say oh I don't like a fine nib you can change but I know that this is just my opinion and my experience so I and I have heard in comments because there's almost 6,000 people here that and off and on people make comments so I have heard different things so I'm, I'm interested always to hear from people because I don't want to leave the impression that these pens are just perfect and there's never a troubled day. I just haven't had any trouble myself. And uh, this being my fifth going into sixth year back in fountain pens, I, I tend to know what to troubleshoot if I do have a misalignment or something going on that I can fix. Like that other one, I've done something to the nib. Or Coco did, I guess. And <laughs> Anyway, I need to work on that one. But I'm confident that I can, in the meantime, take that nib unit out and replace it. The one on the the red one, because that, that all of a sudden started act, acting up. So uh, I looked at it under a loop, and I've got a misalignment. I just don't know how it happened. And that has nothing to do with, to me, that has nothing to do with the construction of the pen. So I'm trying to think. I weighed it out at 26 grams, inked. So, put that down here. But I'm going to put this in the uh, description box. 26 grams, inked. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I'll put all those measurements in there, too, because to me, I just don't... Uh, I don't have that immediate capability to add it to the video, but I can put it in your description. But I think it, it really helps to look at them in... in uh, comparison to other pens we are familiar with a little short but it's not to me it's not at all odd or anything it really reminds me <clears throat> lengthwise it's almost exactly the same whoops it would help if I was aware of where we are in the <laughs> viewfinder here so I think I'll leave you with that uh, hopefully this was helpful but if you have any questions I'll try to answer them in the in the description. Oh, I did take a measurement on the Omar. It's much heavier. It's 33.6. So that's uh, quite a bit heavier. But the Colero is lighter at 23.8 grams. So that was interesting to me. I would have said hmm, that they were about the same. <laughs> that just shows you that you, you do have to kind of measure. I, I just love this thing. I got this so I can make my uh, easy uh, measurements weight-wise and everything. Okay, that is probably more than enough, but let me know in the comments if there's anything else that will help you make the decision or help you uh, learn more about this pen, and I'll be happy to try. Thank you, and bye for now.